OG to three. Man, it's 100 Magazine here. Man, for the people who don't know, man, can we get a brief introduction? Who y'all, man? All right, uh, if you don't know me, uh, I'm really sorry, but I hope you'll know me after this. Uh, I'm OG, everybody call me OG3 or OG. Record producer, part-time songwriter, engineer, uh, and also a member of the SOS band. Now, uh, I do music, and that's about it. Now, I play video you... games, so. <laughs> but we're not gonna talk about that today, because that's just really not important. Now, how did you get the name OG to three? Man, it's really not no rocket science to it, man. My government name is Oliver. Last nice name is Gross, and I'm the third, so <laughs> this is uh, in there, just like yeah, that. Yeah, in, in the story. So that was a uh, that was pretty much it. I, I'm really not creative outside of music. I didn't want to go by like you know nothing crazy like the Phoenix or the Fire Wizard or no shit. So well, no stuff and all because. But uh, you know. Now, when did you get your start in producing? Man, um, I started producing here in Nashville. Um, after I graduated high school, I was doing I was doing music in high school too. But I um, how did I start? Good grief! Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, I did a session for somebody because I used to sing too. So I really started making beats because I can you know most most producers is the same story. You know, couldn't afford to buy beats, so I started making my own. But I did a session with this uh, this guy named Jody Stevens and. Um, he introduced me to uh, Fade Eastwood. I was do I was just doing like a singing session, so I met uh, I met up with Fade Eastwood and started working on him. And then my homeboy Maddie Lee, he was already producing too. So I was just kind of you know learning from them and stuff, <clears throat> and just taking what I already knew as far as about music and everything, and just threw it all in the pot, man. And a couple years later, we're here. So now we spoke about it, man. You said you don't you don't have to work outside your gift. Oh yes. Yeah, what, what, what is it like to actually do what you love? Man, it's, it's a blessing, man. I, I do my best not to take it for granted because I, I know a lot of people that, that would love to have my position. So um, it's, it's really cool, man. It just uh, it just took a little stepping out on faith and uh, everything just kind of fell into place, man. And it's just like, you know, it's just fun, man. That's all it is. It's just really fun. So. Now, what was your reaction? Do you remember how much you got paid for your first beat? Man, good God, I didn't get nothing for my first beat, dude. Man, yeah. like my first just ever beat sale, I probably got like, man, $25, $50. That was it, man. It wasn't nothing. But that was I, I mean, it felt good, though, because somebody wanted to rap on my stuff. But, you know, over time, I was like, oh, I'm like gas prices. I got to go up that. Now, what would you say is the, the, the most you ever got for a beat? Mm. Oh, let's see. Well, it depends, because, I mean, Working with strange music, I, I made a lot of money, but uh, I, I really don't remember the exact amount because, of course, I got I got an advance and I got um, and I get you know I still get royalties now. So I would just say working with strange music in general is probably the most I've made just doing production. Now, is there anybody that you actually looked up to that you know outside of Fade Eastwood, you know, and, and people like that that actually you know that you kind of craft yourself after? Oh yeah, man, a lot of the the, the, the greats, man, like. Uh, I was really influenced even before I knew I wanted to be a producer. I was always listening to like Timbaland and Danger and Pharrell, and Ryan Leslie, uh, you know, just all those the, the, the big cats making like really big records, and you know, even like Brian Michael Cox and Jermaine Dupri. And I actually got to work with them last year. No, it's a new year. So two years ago in 2013, I got to work with uh, Brian Michael Cox and Jermaine Dupri in Atlanta. So that was cool. Actually being around some of the, the big people that, that inspired me to do what I do as well. So. Now who are some of the uh, the people you produce for? 
Um, man, right now I've worked with uh, I work with Yo Gotti, and um, I work with Marshawn. I got a record that's unreleased right now that I'm uh, that I done with August Alcina in London on the track. Uh, man, who else? Gospel artist named Molly Music. Uh, Sammy, I got to work with him. Uh, K Smith, Ali Boyd. Good grief, I really don't know. I'd have to look again, but. Uh, of course, Strange Music too, uh, Tech Nine, Chris Calico, Stevie Stone. Uh, got to work with all those guys. Uh, and maybe a couple of people. Oh, yeah, my homie uh, Iman Shumpert, who's now a member of the Cavaliers, which is crazy. So I'm going to the Cavs Thunder game. Told you I was going Plug in. Yeah, that's Steve Shump. And um, I really can't remember who else, but. Uh, it, I, I don't long know. list. Yeah, I mean, it's not that long, but I just can't remember right now. <laughs> Now, now, what would you say, man? Is there any special preparations that you actually do, like any exercises, as far as music-wise, before you go into producing? Man, um, I just listen to music, but I don't listen like like I listen to like all kinds of music, and I encourage everybody to do that because I mean, you can only pull so much from what you're already into. But like right now, especially like uh, since joining the SOS band, I've been listening to a lot more like funk music now. So uh, just and you know, like just older like big band sound and stuff. So. I listen to pop all the time, I listen to, you know, some rap, R&B, all that stuff, but I just kind of, um, I just kind of go in with a, just with an open mind before I do any record, and I just trust it to be whatever it's going to be. I never really got, like, a true blueprint, it's just, it's really like mental vomit, it just goes everywhere. Now, now what is it like, man, being a producer in Nashville? Man, it's really cool, bro. Country music state. City. <laughs> right, um... Man, it, it's, it, it's been really cool, um, especially since I moved back from Atlanta. I don't know why, but I guess the whole going to Atlanta, coming back thing, that really spiked me up around here anyway. So that's been cool, but I mean, I stay busy, so I like it. And I, I feel like, you know, the Nashville hip hop scene is changing and it's actually starting to grow. So we'll be bigger than just the country music, you know, uh, arena that everybody always looks at when they think of Nashville. Now, is there anything else that we could be on the lookout for you from as far as producing, singing, you know, uh, work-wise with the SOS, all that? Oh yeah, man. Um, man, that's all kind of stuff, man. I'm uh, I'm actually starting a record label this year, so that's uh, that's something. Uh, and just expect more music. I, I can't even like say what's gonna happen. Um, I kind of got a placement, but I really can't talk about it right now. I wish I could, but uh, y'all will see soon enough. And. I'm booked out. That's what I try and let everybody know that I'm booked. And, and how can people get in touch with you as far as like to check out the tracks or you know to even just just get at you to see what your schedule's like to try to book some time? Oh man, they can uh, they can hit my website, which is uh, www.ogthe3.com. Um, I got music on my site. I got my you know Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. That's the same thing at ogthe3. And um, just hit me up, I guess. Alright. Hey, what's good? It's your boy OG the 3, man, and I'm rocking with 100 Magazine, man. Bow! Shout out to the homie Ice Cold J for the connect.